During the early morning hours of Thanksgiving Day 2023, mother of two Iris Billy was walking along State Route 73 in Navajo County, Arizona. The 30-year-old, whose family expected her home for the holiday, was mowed down by an oncoming vehicle, the driver of which fled the scene without rendering aid. Shortly thereafter, a concerned passerby contacted the White Mountain Apache Police Dispatch Center to report the incident. Billy was pronounced dead and an investigation was launched to uncover the perpetrator of the fatal hit and run. One of the first responders to the crime scene was 49-year-old Josh Anderson, a tribal officer who'd been on the force for two decades. Anderson was among the group of four officers tasked with going to the victim's home to inform her family that she was deceased. On November the 24th, investigators conducted a full-scale analysis of the patrol car Anderson had been using the previous day. It was determined that the vehicle had sustained considerable damage that was commensurate with the collision that killed Billy. Anderson was consequently arrested on a litany of charges, including aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, criminal negligence, and leaving the scene of a fatality collision. According to White Mountain Apache Police, Anderson had been on duty at the time of the crash, and after fleeing the scene had returned with his colleagues in order to cover up his involvement. Following his arrest, the man resigned from the police department. As of the latest developments, it was reported that the case had been turned over to the FBI. Number 7. Keith Smith on December the 1st of 2018, Maryland man Keith Smith called Baltimore police to report that his wife had been fatally stabbed. According to Smith, he'd stopped his vehicle in the thousand block of Valley Street and lowered the passenger side window to let his wife, Jacqueline, give a female panhandler $10. As she did so, however, the panhandler's male counterpart approached the vehicle. The man reached into the car, stabbed Jacqueline multiple times, then made off with her necklace and wallet, leaving her with devastating injuries that ultimately proved fatal. Following Jacqueline's death, 55-year-old Keith and his daughter, Valeria, left the state, which law enforcement immediately viewed as suspicious, revealed that Keith had attempted to book one-way tickets to Cuba and Canada prior to the stabbing. He didn't have a passport though, so he researched the possibility of flying to the US Virgin Islands instead. Police also learned that Keith looked up whether or not one needed a passport to travel to Jamaica and whether he'd be able to get into Mexico without passing through a border crossing. Three months after Jacqueline's death, authorities tracked Keith and Valeria down near the US-Mexico border. They were taken into custody after which Valeria admitted that the panhandler story had been a complete fabrication. In reality, Keith fatally stabbed his wife in Druid Hill Park, then concocted the elaborate hoax to cover it up. The FBI confirmed that cell phone records placed both Keith and Valeria in Druid Hill Park at the time of the incident. In September of 2019, the latter pleaded guilty to accessory after the fact to first-degree murder. She subsequently testified against her father, revealing that the family had been on their way home after a birthday celebration when he took a detour and committed the gruesome crime. He allegedly instructed Valeria to lie about what happened. Keith later went to Jacqueline's workplace to retrieve documents pertaining to her life insurance policy, of which he was the beneficiary. Following a week-long trial in December of 2021, Keith was found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in prison. Number 6. Laszlo Pentec Police in Fairfax, Virginia received a call about a double shooting in the 9200 block of Oakla Drive on the afternoon of January the 6th of 2017. Responding officers found 51-year-old Donna Pentec dead from an apparent gunshot wound to the head. The victim's husband, Laszlo, also presented with gunshot wounds. Earlier that day, the couple's teenage daughter returned home to find her mother already deceased on her bed and her father bleeding in the bathtub. Laszlo was taken to a nearby hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. He told law enforcement that he wasn't sure who shot him and his wife, stating that he hit his head on the tub and passed out, but could hear voices in the other room. However, following a long and arduous police investigation, Laszlo was arrested in February of 2019. 
More than two years after the incident, forensic evidence led investigators to the conclusion that Laszlo had been the one to shoot his wife in her sleep after discovering financial documents relating to her bankruptcy. He allegedly inflicted his own non-fatal gunshot wound to make it look like a breaking gone wrong and throw the police off his trail. The man denied the accusations but was nevertheless brought to trial on charges of first-degree murder. In August of 2019, Laszlo was convicted and consequently faced a 39-year prison term as punishment. Number 5. The Killing of Brianna Gay A 16-year-old transgender girl from Warrington, Cheshire, England was murdered in February of 2023. The victim, Brianna Gay, was a student at Birchwood Community High School and a trans advocate who'd amassed tens of thousands of TikTok followers under the name Ginger Puppy X. On February the 11th, just after 3 p.m., witnesses found her lifeless body along a path in Colcheth Linear Park. She was pronounced dead by paramedics shortly thereafter. A medical examination determined that Gay had been stabbed nearly 30 times in the head, neck, chest, and back in what was described as a brutal and punishing attack. A day after the murder, Cheshire police zeroed in on a pair of 15-year-old suspects, a female referred to as X and a male referred to as Y. Both suspects were found to have traits of autism, with Y also being diagnosed with selective mutism, which manifested in him only being able to speak with his mother. As a result, he was allowed to communicate with authorities by typing on a computer. According to the prosecution, the defendants had grown obsessed with Gay and had previously tried to poison her with inordinate amounts of ibuprofen, which made her quite ill but didn't kill her. X and Y both tried to place the blame for the fatal stabbing on each other. In the end, however, they were both found guilty of murder following a trial that concluded in December of 2023. It was ruled that the killer's identities would be revealed during their sentencing hearing which was slated to take place at Manchester Crown Court in February of 2024. Number 4. Scott Peterson 27-year-old Lacey Peterson disappeared from the home she shared with her husband in Modesto, California, on Christmas Eve of 2002. The woman, who was eight months pregnant at the time, was reported missing by her husband, Scott, who claimed to have returned home to find Lacey's car parked in the driveway and the house completely empty. Law enforcement would later state that they suspected foul play at the onset of the investigation, but Scott was initially portrayed sympathetically by the press. On December the 30th, a woman by the name of Amber Frey came forward to reveal that she'd been having an affair with Scott. The latter was accused of engaging in two other extramarital relationships prior to his involvement with Frey. In April of 2003, Dog walkers stumbled upon human remains within Point Isabel Regional Shoreline Park in Richmond. The following day, the decomposing body of a recently pregnant female washed up on the rocky shoreline of the San Francisco Bay. It was determined that the two sets of remains belonged to Lacey and her unborn child. Four days later, Scott was arrested in San Diego. In his car, investigators found $15,000 in cash, survival gear, camping equipment, multiple sets of clothes, four cell phones, and a pair of driver's licenses, his and his brother's. The suspect's father claimed that he'd been living out of his car because of the incessant media attention attracted by the case. However, authorities believe that the items in Scott's vehicle were an indication that he planned to flee the US. Though the man denied involvement in the killings of his wife and unborn son, he was brought to trial on both first and second degree murder charges during the summer of 2004. The prosecution relied heavily on circumstantial evidence to build their case against Scott, whose behavior before and after Lacey's disappearance was described as strange and suspicious. They were able to establish that Scott had several potential motives for eliminating his wife, most notably his multiple affairs and mounting financial troubles. In the end, he was found guilty and sentenced to death. In 2021, his sentence was commuted to life without parole. Number 3. Joseph Pushka On the afternoon of January the 12th of 2022, Irish woman 
Ashling Murphy was viciously attacked while walking along a canal path in the county town of Tula Moor in County Offaly. The 23-year-old primary school teacher and musician sustained 11 stab wounds to the neck, which proved fatal. Law enforcement swiftly identified a suspect, 33-year-old Joseph Pushka, from the village of Mukla. The man, a Slovak national, denied involvement in the young woman's murder instead, claiming that he'd been attacked by a different man who also allegedly stabbed Murphy. According to Pushka's testimony, he was riding his bicycle along the path where Murphy's body was later found. Suddenly, a man wearing a surgical mask started yelling at him, pushed him off the bike, and accosted him with a knife. Pushka claimed that shortly thereafter, Murphy appeared and was attacked by the man in some nearby bushes. After watching the suspect flee on foot, Pushka stated that he tried to render aid to Murphy who was badly injured and attempted to cover her wounds with her scarf. As a bystander approached him, Pushka ran away claiming to have been really scared and in shock. Despite his claims, he was charged with Murphy's murder, to which he pleaded not guilty. The inculpatory evidence against him included DNA tests from the crime scene, CCTV footage, eyewitness testimony, and the confession given to police by Pushka himself, which he later said he couldn't remember. In November of 2023, a jury returned a unanimous guilty verdict and Pushka was sentenced to life in prison. Today's topic was requested by Dance of Lies. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Eda Espinosa in the early hours of January the 14th of 2023, South Florida woman Joanna Aritzabal returned to her family's Miami-Dade residence after working a late shift. Shortly after midnight, the woman got into an argument with her husband, Ida Espinosa, over their failing marriage. Tension between the couple escalated to the point where 40-year-old Espinosa retrieved a knife from the kitchen, he proceeded to attack his wife, stabbing her multiple times. Joanna succumbed to her injuries, after which Espinosa put her lifeless body on the couch, concealed her wounds with bandages, and cleaned up the bloody aftermath of the stabbing. He subsequently covered Joanna's body with a sheet, trying to hide her from their two young children. Espinosa drove the kids to a friend's house where he was found by police and arrested for the murder to which he reportedly confessed while in custody. Friends of the family launched a GoFundMe aimed at raising money for the children. As of January of 2024, the fundraiser had collected over $32,000 in donations. An update posted in September of 2023 indicated that the kids were in the custody of the victim's sister. Stick around after number one if you'd like to watch our previous release about when hiding goes wrong as well still. Number one, Rexford Lynn Keel Jr. North Carolina woman Diana Alejandra Keel was last seen leaving her Nashville residence on March the 8th of 2019. When she failed to return home, her daughter reported her missing to the authorities. A few days later, Deputies from the Nash County Sheriff's Office came upon human remains in the woods near the town of Leggett. Located more than 20 miles from the Keel family home, the body was confirmed to be Diana's. She'd been found wearing only underwear and her wedding ring. Law enforcement questioned the victim's husband, Rexford Lynn Keel Jr., but he was released after claiming to have seen her leave the house with friends on the day she went missing. Detectives learned from Diana's family that her marriage to Rexford had been breaking down and she planned to divorce him. On March the 17th, investigators had gathered enough evidence to charge the man with the first-degree murder of his wife. However, by that time, He'd already skipped town, an arrest warrant was issued for Rexford, who was believed to be driving a 1998 Chevy pickup truck with North Carolina plates. The following day, police in southeastern Arizona conducted a traffic stop on Interstate 10, just outside the city of Benson. The man behind the wheel was identified as Rexford, who had a knife, camping gear, medication, and a large amount of cash in his possession. The location of his arrest was only 34 miles from the Mexican border, leading authorities to speculate 
that he was planning to flee the country. In the fall of 2021, Rexford pleaded no contest to murder and kidnapping charges and was consequently sentenced to up to 41 years in prison. Number 8. Joshua Dobson English teenager Joshua Dobson had been evading police in the Greater Manchester area after stealing a Mitsubishi ASX and failing to pay for fuel in May of 2022. Later on, in August, officers went to arrest the 18-year-old disqualified driver at his Rochdale home. Dobson was nowhere to be found, but officers then noticed that a giant teddy bear slumped in the corner of the room appeared to be breathing. Upon closer examination of the toy, they found Dobson. He'd torn open the teddy bear's backside and, because of his petite frame, was able to hide inside its stuffing. Dobson was arrested and subsequently jailed for nine months for theft of a motor vehicle, driving while disqualified and making off from a petrol station without payment. Social media was inundated with puns when news of the arrest broke, with Rochdale police setting the tone by writing that Dobson was stuffed behind bars and that they hoped he'd have a bearable time inside. Number 7. Sarah Boone and Jorge Torres On February 23rd of 2020, Florida woman Sarah Boone called 911 and reported that her boyfriend had died at their Winter Park home. 42-year-old Boone claimed that the previous night, she and Jorge Torres had been playing a game of hide-and-seek while inebriated, and they'd thought it would be funny if the latter hid in a suitcase. Boone told law enforcement she then passed out in their bedroom and forgot that she'd left her boyfriend zipped up in the luggage. It wasn't until the following day, in the afternoon, that the woman remembered he was still in the suitcase and opened it up to find he'd fatally suffocated. Boone maintained that it had been an accident and gave officers permission to search her phone. Two videos recovered from the device contradicted her version of events, indicating that she'd intended to punish her boyfriend for his past transgressions. The couple had a documented history of domestic violence, dating back to at least 2018. In one clip, Torres was heard yelling at Boone from the suitcase and telling her he couldn't breathe. Boone laughed at him and replied, That's what you do when you choke me as her boyfriend continued pushing against the fabric and pleading for release. The woman told him, that's what I feel like when you cheat on me, adding that he should shut up. A second video showed the luggage in a different position, with Torres calling out Boone's name and again stating that he couldn't breathe. When the woman was confronted with the videos, she reportedly couldn't bear to watch them and claimed that she didn't remember having recorded them on the night she was arrested and charged with second-degree murder, with her trial set for November of 2022. Number 6. Wayne and D'Angelo Mitchell Law enforcement in North Charleston, South Carolina, placed brothers Wayne and D'Angelo Mitchell in the back of a police cruiser while they searched their vehicle on November the 30th of 2011. The car had initially been pulled over because one of its headlights wasn't working. A harrowing video was then captured by the police vehicle's dash cam of an interaction between the siblings. 23-year-old D'Angelo told his younger brother that he couldn't afford another strike on his record and asked him to eat the cocaine he had in his possession. The older Mitchell pleaded with 20-year-old Wayne saying that he was going to get a life sentence and adding, You ain't got no strike. I can get you out. He then pulled out the cocaine he'd hidden between his buttocks and gave it to his little brother. Wayne ate the drug but within 20 minutes had trouble breathing and holding his head up. D'Angelo yelled at the police officers and told them that Wayne was unresponsive. He told them he'd swallowed cocaine but gave no further information on the drug's provenance. Wayne died at a local hospital not long after the incident. Upon examining the footage, law enforcement charged D'Angelo with his death and a local police chief told the media that he'd been left upset and sickened by the footage. In 2013, D'Angelo pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter and possession with intent to distribute, for which he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Number 5. Edwin Valdemar Arteaga Perez In July of 2011, guards at the jail in Chetomal, Mexico, noticed that a visitor was struggling to wheel out what appeared to be an abnormally heavy suitcase. 19-year-old Maria Del Mar Ajona had been allowed a conjugal visit with her common-law husband, Edwin Valdemar Artiega Perez. The man was serving a 20-year sentence for various unspecified crimes. Ahona, who was pregnant at the time, 
had been allowed to take her suitcase inside for the visit. She appeared to have trouble with this on her way out and was consequently stopped and searched by corrections officers. They unzipped her bag to find Perez curled up inside while only wearing socks and underwear. The failed jailbreak was covered by multiple media outlets around the world. It resulted in Arjona's arrest and Perez being taken back to his cell and likely to have more time added to his sentence. Number 4. Carlito Vale in June of 2015, a man's lifeless body was found on a roof in Richmond, London. It was determined that he'd fallen from great height as the force of the impact had decapitated him and mangled his remains. Roughly 11 hours prior to the discovery, two men had hidden in the wheel well of a plane leaving Johannesburg, South Africa and bound for the English capital. They were later identified as 24-year-old Themba Kabika and Carlito Vale, aged 29. The latter was an orphan from Mozambique who'd made his way to Uganda and South Africa before attempting to find a better life in the UK. He and Kabika had learned how to hide on the plane by studying designs in books. They put on layers of clothing and jumped perimeter fences to gain access to the aircraft and then made the extremely dangerous 8,000-mile trip. Real well stowaways faced death at every phase of the flight, including being crushed by the landing gear when it retracts succumbing to hypothermia or hypoxia and falling from the well during takeoff or landing. As the plane approached Heathrow and before Kabika passed out from a lack of oxygen, he remembered that Vale turned to him and said, we made it. Those would become the man's last words. Kabika had wrapped his arms through cabling near one of the engines and suffered burns, but the move ultimately saved his life. When the landing gears came out, he remained inside the aircraft while Vale plummeted to his death roughly 1,400 feet. Kabika woke up on the London runway with a shattered leg and surrounded by guards. But he was allowed to continue living in the UK where he changed his name to Justin and had hopes of pursuing a career in music. Number 3. Demeka Mead and Roy Austin Walker On May the 12th of 2022, law enforcement in Switzer, West Virginia, responded to reports of an altercation involving a firearm that had occurred at the Switzer apartments. Upon approaching the unit, Deputy C. L. Carter saw a face-tattooed man enter apartment 202 while attempting to elude him. Carter gave chase, but Walker exited the residence from the rear and fled into nearby woods. In spite of successfully evading the deputy, 26-year-old Walker was later found hiding inside a dumpster from the parking lot of Hatfields Market. He was arrested and charged with misdemeanor fleeing on foot. Meanwhile, back at the apartment, an unnamed female victim reported that 30-year-old Demeka Mead had made threats to shoot her. A video later provided by a witness would show Mead hitting the other woman with a firearm. After a brief struggle, the victim took the gun from her and threw it onto an embankment near the apartment. Mead retrieved it and returned to the residence, where she reportedly hid it under a couch. The victim allowed Deputy Carter to search the home and he found the 9mm handgun. Mead was arrested and charged with assault, battery, brandishing a weapon, wanton endangerment and assault with a firearm. The relationship between her, the victim and Walker remained unspecified. Number 2. Sean Maranzino A suspected burglar was found hiding inside the air-conditioning vent of a dentist's office in the New York region of Long Island. In March of 2019, Sean Maranzino, a man in his 30s, was discovered by employees of Calderon Dental Care roughly three hours after he'd gotten stuck inside the vent while trying to access the business. The vent in which he'd become trapped was only 14 inches wide. The workers alerted the police who arrived at the scene, removed him from the ceiling and took him into custody. The office's owner, Dr. Mike Calderon, reportedly started laughing upon recalling what Maranzino told him upon being found in the vent. He'd initially said he was looking for his cat, Sparkles, before claiming he was from the fire department and requesting a ladder. In the week leading up to the failed dental office heist, the unemployed HVAC specialist had burglarized four additional businesses in Suffolk County, in each case gaining access by hiding in the vents. In the early hours of March the 14th, however, Maranzino fell through the scene of a Jackson Hewitt tax preparation business in East Pachogi. An employee who'd been sleeping at the office came out with a shotgun and forced Maranzino out. 
The burglar had tried calming down the employee by claiming he was there to deliver vitamins and it was believed he'd actually tried to rob the pharmacy next door. In spite of his failure, Maranzino targeted three more businesses in the days that followed. Following his arrest, he was charged with five counts of third-degree burglary. Number 1. Joshua Jakes Law enforcement in South East London were called to a disturbance in Bermondsey in the early hours of April the 25th of 2022. Officers arrived at the residence of 64-year-old Dolette Hill and after forcing their way into her terraced house, they came upon a massacre. The woman's 58-year-old husband, Denton Burke, was found stabbed to death at the bottom of the stairs. In the kitchen, officers found three generations of the same family, all of whom had suffered fatal knife wounds. The victims were Hill, her daughter, Tanisha Afori Akufo and her granddaughter Samantha Drummonds. As they continued moving through the residence, the police discovered a naked man hiding in an upstairs bathroom. He was identified as Samantha's boyfriend, 24-year-old Joshua Jakes. Officers used a taser to subdue him and took him into custody on multiple murder charges. Jakes's motivation remained unclear, but there was speculation that drugs or mental illness had been factors in his knife rampage. During his court appearance in September, Jakes admitted manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility, but the prosecution didn't accept his plea, and the case was set to go to trial. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be tasked with covering up a crime committed by someone you love or accused of a crime you didn't commit? Let us know in the comments section below.